Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Then they came to Ruth at Eliab and Bob. Surely the Lord will mend your ways now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see as mortal sees. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow he does not know how the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head then the full grain in the head but when the grain is ripe at once he goes in with the sickle because the harvest has come he also said with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. David, how many of you have heard of King David? Raise your hand if you've heard of King David. All right, what story do you know most about King David? David, David and Goliath, I heard that over there. And he was a great king uh, and one of the great leaders uh, in our history uh, and in our Bible stories. Uh, but he came about because people wanted a king. Before, they didn't have kings, but uh, they looked around and they saw all the countries around them had great kings with lots of jewels and with huge armies and big palaces. And they said, uh, they said to the person who was in charge, uh, who talked to God, said, you know, tell God we want a king. Have you noticed all these other countries have great, powerful kings? How come we don't have a king? And God spoke spoke to, uh, uh, to him, and he said, you know what? If you guys had a king, you'd have to give a whole bunch of the, your hard-earned money to that king so we could have all of his palaces. And then you'd have to give your, your, your strongest, oldest boy over to serve in the army, uh, and your daughters to help serve in the palace. Did you really want that? Did you really want all of that? And they said, yes, because then we'd have a king and we'd be mighty and big and great and grand like those other countries. God said, I really don't think that you really want that, but if that's what you say, I'll let you have it. So they had a king and they went, and guess what they picked for a king? David? Nope, before David. Saul. Huge. He was one of the biggest guys they'd ever seen, and he had huge muscles, and he was mighty, and they said, this is going to intimidate everybody. Look at this king. This is the biggest, strongest king we could possibly find. And you know what? He wasn't a very good king. And then the next time, guess who picked the king? God did. But guess what God sees? God sees what's inside. God sees things that we don't see. God sees gifts that we don't even know that we have. 
and they didn't even invite David to come and be looked at as, as king. They had invited all of the older, older brothers of, uh, uh, of the, the boys of Jesse, but they told David, ah, you stay and take care of the, uh, the sheep. They don't want you. And they went and they looked through all of the boys, and they didn't find the one they were looking for, and they said, is there another boy? Is there another son that you haven't shown us? And they bring David. They're like, oh, yeah, there's David, but you don't want him. And guess what? Guess which one God chose? David. You know why? Because God sees gifts that we don't even know we have in ourselves. That's pretty amazing. And God used David uh, to be one of the most important people in history. Just like God uses us. And God uses the gifts that we have, which may not look like the gifts that the person next to us or the person across from us or the person that we think, man, I'd really like to be like that guy or that girl. God uses our own gifts because they're special. Because God made us that way. And you know what else God tells us? That when we use those gifts, God talks about planting all kinds of seeds and all kinds of different wonderful things growing up, but God plants us all differently and gives us different gifts. But God tells us if we use our gifts, if we take the, the life God's given us and the special gifts that we have and we use them to help build God's world here on earth, to help do the things that God asks us to do, to help take care of one another, you know what God promises? That it can grow into something enormous. He talks about a mustard seed. Does anybody know how small a mustard seed is? Has anybody ever seen a mustard seed? Yeah. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Have you ever seen an eyelash when, it, when, it, when you have an eyelash on your finger? It, it's about like that. It's about like an eyelash. And Jesus takes this mustard seed and he says, see this? This little tiny seed. People don't think much of this. Look how tiny it is. But he said, you know what it can do? It can grow into a giant, giant mustard tree. And you know what that mustard tree does? It provides shade for people. It provides houses for birds and for different things that live in it. That tiny little seed grew all the way to that big, giant, tiny, tiny, big, huge tree. And God says the same is true with us. When we use those gifts, even the ones we don't realize yet that we have, when we use them to help God's people, grows enormous and can change the world. So we need to find that special gift, the gift that God put inside each of us, that special seed, and we need to take care of it. We need to use it to help serve other people, to help make God's world better, and amazing things can happen. That's God's promise that God will be with us, and God will be watering it and taking care of it and helping it grow. So if we use those gifts, we can do mighty things, just like David. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, can you all say amen with me? Amen. 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 That our works may find favor in your sight. joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. We all have to face the mountain? All right. And I will say it and you all will repeat after me. God loves the world. God loves the world. God loves us. God loves us. God loves you. God loves you. I love you. I love you. God loves me. God loves me. I love me. I love me. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to 